Hey y'all, this is Joris Benagos and I'm here with Marcus Ponto. This is a great pleasure. He's the first Brazilian astronaut to go into space. Hi Marcus, how's everything going? Uh, very good, very good. It's really my pleasure to, to be here today to talk with these kids and uh, maybe give them some ideas, some thoughts about space flight and uh, some probably some things that can happen, uh, can, can help them to, to their lives as well. Exactly. Well, my first question is, um, whenever you went to space, and whenever you saw the planet Earth, what changed in your mind? Like, you saw the whole planet. What happened in your mind there? <laughs> Well, first of all, I, I don't believe anybody can go to space and one come back to say, if, if somebody go to space and come coming back say, you know, never, I, I've never changed. Everything is the same. There's a no, that's not true. <laughs> so every time you go, uh, you have the sensation of being uh, part of something, I universe, see. and uh, you feel very small. That's true, but from other point of view, you feel that you have to do something in your life like a legacy to, to the next generation and things like this. So you feel uh, different, not because you are an astronaut or something, you feel different because uh, you realize how small you are. Exactly. Well, my another question is about your training. How was the experience? I mean, like, were you ready to go to space whenever they say, hey, you're selected? And how was the physical, psychological and technical training? There's a lot of training uh, before uh, being assigned to flight, but once you're assigned, you get to be very specific about your flight. So everything you have to do, I'm part of the maintenance of the International Space Station, so you have to to study the systems that you're going to, to deal with in space. You're going to, to, of course, International Space Station is a lab, so you have to work the research there. It's like you're in the eyes and the, the hands of the scientists in space, so you have to train specifically for that mission. And uh, about the, the health, uh, you, have, you have to be very careful at the end for the flight. Uh, and uh, the, the medical doctors there, they, they make sure that everything is okay with you and a lot of training with this as well. I see. Well, another question about the Latin American perspective. Um, whenever you were selected, you were selected from Brazil, yeah. right? And so, like, what was your like main idea that you said, well, I'm going to represent Latin American in space. What, what do you think is happening now with the Latin American community and space? Yeah. So first of all, when I when I got a, uh, assigned to this function as an astronaut in, in NASA, I was selecting 1998. Uh, I, I I didn't know at that time that I, I was the only Latin American uh, representing a country yes. from from South America in space or from Latin America actually. We had one astronaut from Mexico time ago and uh, and we had uh, one from Peru but and one from Argentina. I but see. they actually they, they were born in those countries but they they're Americans oh. nowadays. They're, they're the American the citizens that they represent the United States uh, States of America yes. in space. They do not fly with the, the Peru or the, the Argentinian um, uh, flags. So when they told me that uh, you were the only one that flies representing a country from yes. the south hemisphere of the, the, the of the planet, you know, a professional astronaut, so that's not true. Yes, <laughs> but it was a really good sensation. You know, of course, you have this responsibility of representing a country in a region of the, the, the planet, but uh, it's it's very good, especially when you get the chance to talk with the young people and try to inspire them to actually realize their dreams as well. Okay, and my last question, well, two last questions. The first one is, what do you think the, Lat the Latin American countries in development need to do in order to establish a space industry? What is like the, the roadmap for them? Uh, it's like our lives when you, when you are thinking about a plan for your life, mm -hmm. uh, you, you have a big plan, a big dream. And in order to do that, you have to study, you have to prepare yourself, and you have to dedicate part of your time, not only for the emergency issues that you have every day, but also to study and to, to be able to fulfill your responsibilities in the future. It's the same for, for any country. Of course, we have so many things to do to take care of health, uh, everything in the, inside the country, transportation, uh, security, everything. But also 
countries they have to, to, to invest in science technology, and especially in education. That's the way they will get out of the bad situation in all the issues that they have nowadays to be prepared for the future. And so I see it's the same in space flight, uh, in uh, space exploration. We have to reserve to invest in science technology, otherwise we are going to be always in uh, like a, in developing or developing countries. We have to be developed. Okay, and our very last question is like, um, what is your advice or your message to all youth or younger uh, astronaut dreaming uh, teenagers we have from Latin American countries? What would you tell them? Uh, I would tell what my my mother, my mom told me a long time ago. And that's one thing that I'm going to tell the guys here today. Uh, I came from a very poor family, actually. And uh, uh, I had to work when I was 14 years old to help at home. And and then uh, I remember one day when I told my friends that I would like to be a pilot, they told me that it was impossible for me. It's just for rich people to think like this. And then my mother, she, she came and told me, you know, you can be whatever you want in your life if you study, if you work hard, if you persist, and if you always do more than expected from you. So, four things. Study, work hard, persist, always do more than expected from you. You can be whatever you want in life. Thank you very much, sir. Bye-bye. <laughs>